Look, Bokuto, I'm really sorry, but I think you're doing really well right now. You made it through to Nationals, and I know you lost your final to Ichiyama, but you're playing really well, and I think there's someone else that needs my help a little bit more. I think Hinata needs the little bit of comfort. There we go. Hey, yo, what is up, Legends, and welcome back to High Q Day. Bro, last episode, the start of the season, did not start how I thought it was going to start at all. Coming off that high, that high pressure intensity of Season 3, the game with Shiro Torizawa, into like this emotional damage gut punch that came with Hinata not being selected to go with Kageyama to Nationals, not being selected for the first year's training camp. And of course, after we've seen him go through all this hard work and this growth and this growth, and he finally feels like he's got better, just to have it like shoved in his face still how far behind he is compared to these other people was pretty rough to start the season off with. I know a lot of you guys were commenting that like, don't hate on the old coach so much. You know, he's doing this because, you know, Hinata's not that good. You can't blame him and maybe this will help him. And look, I, I understand that. But I still stand on my statement that, you know, he's doing it to spite him. Absolutely. He... Hinata was recommended initially and he turned him down. He turned him down there and then obviously he came, which is like, that's, that's sucky. But then he said, you can stay, but you have to be a bull boy. You can go home at any time if you don't want to be a bull boy. And without that setter, I don't see any worth in you, which is sure, fair. But you don't need to say that at all. If he truly just thought he wasn't good enough, he could say, hey, we didn't invite you here because we didn't believe that you had the skill as the other players. You have to go home, right? Letting him stay is a total thing out of spite. Saying that is out of spite and he's just trying to break his spirit. That's that's how I see it. But this is the great thing of it, right? We can share the different ways we see the show. How later on you can be like, see, Lockie, I told you so. Or I can be like, hey, I stood on my statement. That's the best part of getting to watch this with other people. So I am very, very excited to see how it's going to play out. And we have all these other dynamics happening. Obviously, Kageyama is over at the Nationals training ground. And he's got all these other people there. So I'm very excited to see how that goes there as well. I had a number of people commenting and messaging me on Instagram saying like, hey, is there going to be any more shirts? I know we made that one shirt in the past. And like, hey, I thought we were going to do another one. I know we're hanging on to season four now. And there is another one coming, okay? For those people who are interested in that, it is taking a little bit longer because the artist asked for a little bit more time to work on his original design. And of course, I was like, hey, that's cool. You got the creative freedom. It's whatever, Trevor. So probably either the next episode or the one after, there will be another shirt available. But again, we've only got a limited number. So if that is something that interests you, maybe just try and watch the video within the first two days or so so you don't miss out. But otherwise, I hope you legends have had the most amazing day ever. And whatever it is you did today, I am super, super proud of you. And I know you gave your absolute best. And that is always all that matters. So without any further ado, let's get into this episode two of season four. Hi, cute I had a lot of people comment like, I'm surprised you weren't more secondhand embarrassment of Hina to showing up here. You know, like it was nice that you like were sad for him. I've done lots of things like this okay in my life that you would say are embarrassing or you'd look back on regret so i've like i've removed that feeling from my brain i think so i don't want to like although they were embarrassing i feel like you have to have that go-getter energy to you know like you take 10 opportunities nine of them are embarrassing but one of them pays off right so i've removed the ability to feel that so that i don't like question myself when i go to do it i think that's why i wasn't really that embarrassed i feel bad for suki though the embarrassment there and I love this bit, him standing on business. And he said how tall he is. And they animated it, yeah, look, they animated this bit really well. I love the harsh lines there to show that he's yelling so loud. Ooh.
sick. Once we finally finish Haikyuu, I'm gonna do an episode, episode 2 The Lost, where we go back and like rank all the openings. Powerful individual skills, serving. Serving, yes! We have some more people doing jump serves, I hope. Mm hmm. Yep, practice like you're serving. Game point, you're about to lose and you gotta rip a massive serve. Okay. To see Hinata? Oh, to see Hinata. Grown man beats child. I'm here to see it in Haikyuu. <laughs> what's he going to see his friend for? Oh, wait. Oh, no? Oh, no. <gasps> That's sad. Oh. It's an interesting conversation. Man, all these adult real world things happening while they're trying to help these boys. Mm, as much as I hate what's happened to Hinata here, this camp is such a sick idea. I love it. Playing with people from other teams. Wait, that dude looks short as fuck! I know he's next to the two meter tall guy, but he looked short as fuck. Okay. I don't know who that is. Him. Is he from Datek? Can't remember. Could be the art style change. Were these... There you go. Okay, first year. So they weren't... They didn't get to play. Because Gen Genshi... No, not Genshi. What's the dude with the black bowl cut? He was the only first year on their team. Look at him iron him off, though. Seeing if his spirit's broken yet. Him. He was the only first year. What the heck? Why didn't he get that pass? They're not showing his arms, because his chest is facing forward, but he must have, like... you got to keep your arms locked, but he probably had his arms bent, and that's why it's gone off. A lot of you probably saw that, and you're like, Hey, I pass with my arms bent a little bit, and I swing my arms, yeah? And that's why none of your passes go to the setter. Burn! Yeah, true that. I wish I was two meters tall. But still my same build. So that I'm still nimble. Oh my god, look at that. So he's probably tall but a bit gumby. That's usually how it works. If you're tall, fast, and agile, you're in trouble. He instinctively went to where the spiking is happening. Be like a little chihuahua, be biting his ankles. Okay. I love that he's so eager for feedback. That's sick. Suki, give him something. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's what he likes. That's what you sound like, bro. Who is this dude? He's setting? Ah, oh, wait. On a junior high. Right. Okay. <gasps> Oh. Yeah, you know what? I'll agree with that. Nothing scares me more than, bro, stepping on the ball with your ankles. Holy shit. Hmm. Drumming my fingers, you just can't see it. He's getting yelled at more than us. I remember a distinct comment in the final where... Gen Genshi, that's what I'm just calling him today because I've forgotten his name. The first year from Shiratori Zero, I was like, man, he's yelling at me a lot today. And they're like, that's because he expects the most from you. 
I wonder if that's a little hint there. Not changing my mind yet! Hmm, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. Wow, who said that before? Yes. Ah, oh, he seems kind of immature. All right, Suki. Nice. Nice. And it would kill me having to just watch. Look at him still getting those reps in, baby. And Daichi sees him practicing. I, I, if I see someone who's practicing more than me, I get sick in my stomach knowing that they're doing more work than me. And I have to, they, there you go. Now you know, when you're like, how does that person do more than me? There's your answer. Because I'm so competitive that I feel sick in my stomach if I see someone possibly going to get more attention than me. Man, really exposing myself out in here. It's like a therapy session. NF. True that. Mm. Put that respect on my boy's name. Hello? That was such an accurate depiction of someone trying to do a jump, sir. That ball was animated horribly. But you go and you time it wrong and... Someone in my Discord posted a clip of them jump serving. I was supposed to give them feedback. He's being forced to watch. Mm. This is really sad music. I don't, I don't know why him saying that makes me so upset. Mm, you feel stuck. Mm, this is a really good depiction. This is making me sad. <sighs> Suki waiting to leave with him. Season one, Suki. But you know what? I'm going to allow it. I think this is funny. Damn! All right, you're going a bit hard now. He did embarrass him a bit. He wants it more than anyone else. Hmm. Oh shit, I didn't think we were going to see him. What? I'm still reading, removes unnecessary hair and leaves skin feeling silky smooth. What? I thought he said it was the, a volleyball magazine. Why is he reading the ads? <gasps> oh, he's going to be there. Oh, has his voice got even deeper? Look, these are cute, but bring back the serving half times. This just feels like a way to save money, which I can understand. Animators are overworked and underpaid. Eh? 
But they obviously can't be like, yeah, go crash everything. That's right. Hmm. Mm. Well, he was told to be a bull boy. Think about what it is that only you can do that. Mm. Mm. Don't underestimate what it takes to be a ball boy. Look, Mike Wazowski, think about how can I do this to the best of my ability? What can I take from here? It's what I fucking I live by that, bro. Damn, you can't just drop that fucking Master Ugwe shit in here. Damn, get this man in Kung Fu Panda. But also, I appreciate that he's not like yelling at him and screaming at him. He's. It's the. See, they all respect him, and it's because he just speaks facts. He speaks facts, and he's willing to have a conversation. And, you know, like, those words and him being... It's why, you know, like, I'm not upset, I'm just disappointed. It's so, like, used as a meme now. But when someone you respect and who, like, can actually have conversation and speaks the truth is disappointed in you, it cuts much worse. Not them saying, you can tell they're disappointed, cuts so much worse than, like, someone yelling and being angry at you. And I'm sure that they're representing this really well here. <laughs> Bro, he's getting in so much trouble. Die to as well. <laughs> Potato. What a weird shirt. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Mm. Tanaka and Nishinoya I think it was cool. Mm. Mm. That's what he needs. He needs some Nishinoya, man. A lot's not going right for him. Mm. Match his energy a bit. And then practicing, man, getting those reps in. Even though he never sets anything. And now he's back again. Oh, I love that stretch. Dear God, I love that stretch. What can only you do here? So this title lost is obviously about him. He's very lost right now. Mm. Mm, make it less obvious. It's good advice. That was kind of weird. <laughs> it was so cool. He wants to watch him do the line shot. Oh shit, nice block and receive. That was really well done. Oh, this is the setup, right? Mm, and that hurts as well. You know, it's Oikawa seeing Kagiyama, someone younger than you, getting to play, being better. 
Oh shit, they're all here. Don't give them the theme music, dog. I know they're cool. Oh, look at all these people from the other team. Ah, Suki. <laughs> what if him and Ushijima just start like... <laughs> Hinata's there, <laughs> biting his ankles. Yo, getting to play against these guys? Now, I feel extra bad for Hinata. What do you mean? It's good. Yeah, you get to practice against one of the best in the country. Yeah, damn, that's going to hurt. Oh, making them decide. <laughs> oh, he's so funny, man. That's so embarrassing. I hate this. What a shot to your pride. Yeah, they didn't come together. Mm. Oh, that's good advice. Look, he knows volleyball well. Ooh. Ooh, true that. No one was covering him. Mm -hmm. mm, the red marks on your arms. We've spoken about that before. True that. <laughs> and he keeps getting distracted. Ooh, all about timing. Doesn't matter how tall you are. Mm, it's all about who pushes it last, usually. Damn, they got smoked. To be expected, though. They've never played together before. Mm, look at him coming to talk to him. That's nice. <laughs> but look, that him and even though Ushijima looked at him, they expected him to be here as well. Weird. That's like, a, what have you been doing for the last three years? Kind of comment. <laughs> Why did they need to do a double? Yeah, they're just mucking around. That's what boys do. I hope they're all training properly here. So a lot of standing serving still happening, which is all right. I wish a lot more of you were jump serving, or at least practicing it. Is Yachi got tape there? You know what? I was almost going to say, look here. They've put tape on the net, which I love, which means they're practicing serving in the different lanes. And they've got Yachi holding the tape. That's it's so that you can like focus instead of just, oh, hit a serve over. And they've got Yachi holding it. Where do I want to serve it so that uh, you think about it a lot more? Mm. True that. Okay. 
わし城先生と同じ効率的な方法なんだよなうーんだからこそ人一倍に分かれた武器もあるでしょう私はひなたくんは自分で痛いほど分かっていますよ自分にやらなくてはいけないことが山ほどあることだから焦ることもあるでしょう常に彼らに正解を提供できるならそうすべきですねでも実際我々にできるのは思考を止めないこと最善を探し続けることではないでしょうかはい I kind of saw that as like I'll just quickly pause That they've been like keeping Hina to, like you could say, as a middle blocker, right? As the greatest decoy who hits the super quick instead of like maybe giving him a chance to like play outside, like learn to pass or, you know, hit as a different position or something. That's kind of how I interpreted it because it's been working so well for them like that that they've just been keeping him there. <laughs> mm, they provide an environment that the kids can grow by themselves. ブロックさわるようになってるしうんレスタンドワークトゥギャザーうちのブロックにも習わせねえとオッケーこのミュージックはすごい悲しいそれでお前は やってみるお前は三年間何やってたんだ春子お前の貴重な五日間棒に振らないようにねまあお前あんま焦んなよ俺は価値を感じない<笑> 普段と違うということはそれだけで貴重な詩人だ何かをなすのうんうんお前は何をやっている探せ探せうんいつもと同じ考え方じゃダメだ Mm. Ah. Mm. I hate this. Sorry, Hinata. I think... I think the, the... This is hitting me stupid hard. And, uh... Look. This whole, like, this being lost in the thing and it, like, not going the way you think, but then having to change your attitude. There's, like, this whole other side to Lachlan, okay, that you guys don't, that I don't talk about here, that I don't see. Because I say there's, like, this sport Lachlan and this content Lachlan, and then there's business Lachlan, okay? I really like business as well. And um, it was about a year ago. It was, like, a year ago. And um, I've probably spent like the last, I, I really like e-commerce, right, is my thing. I like inventing products and then getting them made, like you could say like a cool water bottle, right? And you get it made and you sell it online. And a lot of my stuff that I would do is I'd invent products and then I'd sell them on Amazon. Okay, that was my thing. I learned nonstop how to do it for five years and spent heaps of time doing it. And I loved it and I built like this little cool business um, and it was super cool and I loved doing it. And so I spent like five years doing it and building this thing up. And then I had a heap of things doing really well. And, um, you know, I had this one month and I launched this new product and it exploded and we were doing really well. And I was like, fuck yeah, I finally have done all this work. And, you know, like I, I quit uni and looked like this fool for doing it. And like, finally, I made it. Yeah, that's what you think. I made it. And then like, and also I'm not telling the story like looking for sympathy or anything, right? Like I knew the risk, I'm just saying it's how I can relate to it. And then overnight, Amazon brought in this new terms and service. They didn't like one of my products. And so essentially they banned my account and then they seized all my stock and all of, cause Amazon, you make sales and they keep the funds in there for like two weeks a month and then they pay you out. 
And so they held like a whole month's worth of sales, right? And literally overnight, overnight, this business that I built for five years, I was making like good amounts of money just disappeared. Just overnight, they seized it and took it. And like, I just went from having like spent all this time on it to like suddenly having nothing. And then, you know, you still have other shit that you've got to pay stuff off on and whatever, blah, 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 poor me being an adult. And so I spent like a week and then I realized, you know, this is going to take a really long time to fix with like lawyers and stuff like that. And so I put out a heap of resumes. I was like, I need to get a job just quickly uh, as well so that I can like still still pay for stuff while trying to fix this. And so I put out all these resumes and the first place that got back to me within like a couple days was this job at this factory, right? At this factory, it was a source manufacturing factory where they make sauces, like your tomato sauce, your dressings and stuff, and they package them and everything. And they were the first ones to get back. So I was like, yep, I'll take it. I'll take it, dog. And they were like a strong young man. All right, you're going in the production team. You go in the production team. And so you go in and you wear like a full suit over the head and then overalls, gloves, glasses, earmuffs and gum boots. And you're in this room that's like got no windows or anything. So no air circulation. So it's hot as fuck and it's constantly wet because you have to be washing everything and then chemicals to sanitize all the equipment that you can't get on your skin. And then you're making sauces with all these powders and you're constantly covered in eggs and sauce and breathing in these powders. And whatever, there's stuff that's worse, right? But it sucked. And so I was doing that. I'd get there at 4.30 in the morning when it was dark. And I remember there was one morning when I was there and doing it. And um, like I was there and it was like nearly five o'clock. So I was the only one in at the start. And I had to do it in the morning so then I could work on the business from lunchtime. And I was there in this morning. And you have to hook up these pipes to the things to pump all the stuff through. And they're the worst pipes ever. And they're like, they're so hard to connect. You got to hold it, blah, blah, blah. And I remember doing it, just sitting there, there was no one else there and I just couldn't get it. And then I slipped and I like cut my finger and my nail and stuff. And I just like sat down on this wet ground, just sitting there. And I was like, just like, no one knows I'm here. And like, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, how, how did this happen? What am I doing here? And you know, like it was in this factory job and I, I don't know how else to say it in that, you know, like I'd always considered myself like a competitive, successful person who had done well at things. And I never thought I would be in this spot, like sitting here on this wet ground, covered in food, doing this thing, right? And I felt like how they're showing it right here, uh, just so lost and trapped in this situation. And I found that I had to change my attitude with it like what he's saying and think Mike Mazowski and that's why I'm so passionate about it what can I do in this situation that no one else can or what can I take what can I learn from this situation and you know I was there with all these other people who hated it you know you think about a factory they take anyone right so it's all these people who have never learned how to do a lot of things and they're miserable doing this job and I was like what would it take for this to be like a blessing, right? What would it take for this to be the best thing in the world? And I decided I was going to use the opportunity and be like, how, what can I do to like inspire these people? What can I do to bring these people that are depressed, who don't believe they can do anything? What can I do to bring them up? And I decided, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna allow myself to be dragged down to the level of this place. I'm going to bring this place up to my level. And so I decided, you like I decided, how am I going to inspire these people? How can I fill them with energy? How can I be the best source maker there was? And then, you know, things turned around like they always do. And I was able to fix some other things and work with some other people into a spot where I could leave the source factory and go back to trying to fix the business and do other work. But what I got from it in improving my people skills, dealing with these difficult people, but finding ways to make them better, inspire them, make them happy, and then learning about manufacturing and stuff more. And you know, like I do lots of that now. And so a lot of the time we think that these like, these bad situations that we're in where it's like, how could this get worse? Right? And I look back on it and I'm so grateful for it. And at the time, you know, I was just sitting there on this wet ground by myself, like what the fuck am I doing? Embarrassed, 
man, that I now had to like take this job and I didn't tell anyone about it because I was so embarrassed. And now I look back on it and how grateful I am, like the people I got to meet and the skills I got to develop from it, that I would never ever change it. So I know it's a really long story. I'm sorry. It just kind of hit me a bit there. Uh, but I guess why I'm telling it is not looking for sympathy or anything. It's so that next time you're going through something horrible, whatever it is, I encourage you to think about what would I have to do to make this the best situation? What would I have to do to make this a blessing, right? You're dealing with angry people or you've got horrible people in your life. You can now learn how to deal with those people or you learn the kind of person you don't want to be, right? There's endless situations that you can relate it to. And I hope that you can find always a silver lining on it. Sorry for the little rant. Mmm, come on, my boy. You've had your moment alone where you've fallen and now you get back up. Mmm, you're going to be the best fucking ball boy there ever was. The music this episode's been so good. I don't know if I can keep watching this season. This is going to kill me. We're two episodes in. It's just going to be a short outro today, fam. I feel like I've spoken a lot in this episode already, so I'm sorry to have slowed it down and if I bored any people. I really like how they're telling the story, but this shit is, like, hurting me, man. Because I can relate to it so well, and obviously the storytelling is so good. Didn't see Kagiyama at all this episode, so I don't know what's going on there. But, uh... My throat hurts. You know when you're trying not to cry? That's how I feel right now. So I'm just going to call it there. I hope you all have the most amazing rest of your day. I really love this show. And I will see you all in the next episode. Subscribe. Nearly at 10k. Alright, I love you all. Peace.